The first major news item for this race is the massive entry list. 78 cars were entered, and that's the most cars to enter a race since the 2004 race at Cleveland, where 81 cars entered. The second major news item this week is the announcement that after the qualifier, PCC Cup officials are mandating horsepower reductions for the main race today, after the devastating crashes from the qualifier. In happy hour, the cars were running about 240 miles per hour, which is about 10 miles per hour off the pace from the qualifier, but still very fast. Your pole sitter today is Samuel Brown in the number 71 Johnson Racing Best Buy Chevrolet, and he takes the field to the green flag, and he gets a great jump over Edward Carroll. Barry Huveno jumps to the outside to try to make it three wide for the lead, entering turn one, but Samuel Brown gets away, and he pulls out a big lead over the rest of the field, which is already starting to go two and three wide as they enter the backstretch. By this point, the cars are already starting to hit 200 miles per hour on the backstretch, and they should be hitting 220 by the end of the straight. This is Louis Ballard running the number 11 Clockwork Team Lexus car, and he's making a great debut by running up at the front by lap two. He'll be running the full season alongside his teammate Claire Ossier in the 21. At the other end of the field on lap four, we have Preston Bell running the Mesa Speedway racing car, and he, well, he did make the race, but he's not exactly proving anything by running in the back and losing the draft very fast. Isaac Kowalczyk in the number 39 Reaperware Omeka leads over Kenny Gartosa in the number 45 Lion X Volpe. After being kicked off his ride unceremoniously before Darlington, Gartosa is back with his own team and he is running up at the front, impressing many of the teams here. We come back to Preston Bell, who by lap 5 has already lost the main draft and is falling back even further than before. Tough break for the 3 crew. At the start of lap 5, Joe Craig slides up the track and gets into the wall pretty hard, and he falls back to the back of the pack, and that's going to hurt that team. They really were looking for a good run because they've been slipping in the points the last couple weeks. Here is Cameron Taylor running midfield in the number 150 LaPost Inglesby. Normally this car is 77, but Cameron Taylor decided to change the number to 150 to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the Civil War starting. Not sure how he got that one past the officials, or how they're going to work out owner points for that, but he's giving the car a good run right now. Lap 12, Nikos Costapoulos leads, and he faces a challenge from Barry Juveno, and now Kenny Gartosa pulls to the bottom. And now, Christopher Loxanen pulls in, and it's four wide for the lead, entering turn three. Running four wide here is very dangerous to say the least, and they work it out! All four drivers manage to get through without causing a massive incident. Lap 21 in the Clockwork Team Lexus cars are moving towards the front. Louis Ballard is getting pushed by Claire Ossier towards the lead. It's a great example of teamwork we've been seeing from a bunch of cars this weekend. Earlier that lap, the Fortner Team Asia car of Daisuke Gakudo gets into the wall and he falls to the back of the pack similar to what Joe Craig did. But this team needs a good run because they've been at the back of the pack the entire year. They're 30th in honor points and they're the final locked in car and they need to increase the gap on 31st. Caution 1 came out on lap 22. Kenny Stephan slaps the wall coming out of turn 2. Blake Hamp powers and turns John Jefferson into Zach Kovac and all hell breaks loose. Many cars in it. More cars driving in. Cars spinning everywhere. And Robert Markley is flipping in the 20 car. And he's flipping down the track violently. Brendan Kelly's in it. Chris Benson. Louis Ballard. And Andy Lambert's in it. The Daytona winner is in it. And it looks like he's done for the day. We ride on board with Kyle Winsloff. He was one of the many cars that was involved in this. And he's following Chester Benson in the Cozy Coupe, number 30. And... They see the smoke up ahead, and they slow down, and, but he just gets hooked by Louis Ballard, and he ends up flipping over Robert Markley. However, even with damage, he still has to avoid Andy Lambert, which he does quite well. And we're on board with Louis Ballard now, and he sees Kenny Stephens hit the wall, and he gets turned by the 20 of Robert Markley and just gets thrown into all of this mess. And he's just spinning, and there's nothing he can do aside from wait for his car to stop. And on the bottom of the track, you see Zach Kovac and Daisuke Gakudo go flying by at about 200 miles per hour through this accident. They're really lucky they didn't get involved in this. And Louis Ballard drives past the wrecked car of Andy Lambert, and he will continue on, but he is definitely damaged. And under caution, both Edward Carroll and Stringfellow Vincent fall out from tire issues. Hmm. Fazi D'Anenzo in the number 62 for Carcia Aragon Motorsport leads the field to the restart with Claire Ossier behind him. One car in the back seems to be dumping oil and spewing smoke all over the track, and it's the 83 of Kenny Steffens, who, who slapped the wall before during the first caution on lap 22. He's going to pull the car off the track and drop out of the race, and that's not going to warrant a caution. It's really a tough break for that 83 car, as Kenny Steffens does the right thing and pulls it off below the racing surface on the yellow line. 
Nicholas Corradovo in the 49 car manages to get by Fazi Dianenzo in the 63 for the lead. A few laps later, Ryan Jeffries appears at the front of the field, being pushed by Claire Ossier. Jeffries is the leading rookie contender this year, and if he doesn't win it, his teammate Christopher Loxanen will. Caution 2 flew on lap 33. Wes Jones in the 46 laps the wall and 71 Samuel Brown react. And he pulls up the track into Sam Smith and... Oh my. Huge accident in the tri-oval. Bob Graham in the 27 was just an innocent victim in all this. He just slammed the outside wall at 220 miles per hour. And the car went flipping into the catch fence and down the track. And Bob Graham almost hits the pace car. This is a very serious incident. We're very concerned about both drivers. Both drivers were airlifted to a local hospital. No word on their medical condition as of yet. But there's no way you can't get through an incident like that without an injury of some kind. Earlier we showed you an onboard camera from Wes Jones and he barely got through that incident. Wow, that's just a massive incident. And the debris flying over the catch fence and into the crowd and I'm sure there's a few injuries there too. Despite the protests from many drivers to call the race, the race restarted on lap 39 with Kenny Gartosa in the number 45 Line X Volpe leading the race. This car is a one-off entry and he hopes to show up at more races. He's been building his own engine, but that hasn't been working too well for him. Hopefully his engine will be able to hold up for the rest of the race. As you saw in the restart, Louis Ballard in the 11 car started on the inside and he's a lap down. He's laying most of the cars by and being a very gracious back marker. On the other hand, Sam Smith in the 5 car is being a not so gracious back marker. However, you can argue that he's battling for position because he's still in the lead lap, but he's holding up the cars and losing about a second a lap. He should probably get out of the way. Only three laps after the restart on lap 42, Claire Ossier leads the field, which has dwindled down to a lead pack of 18 cars. Another two laps after that, the two Garcia Aragon Motorsports cars of Nikos Kostopoulos and Fazi Dianenzo at the front of the field, working together. Hooray for teammates! This has been one of the greatest displays of teamwork we've seen all year. This is the second group of cars from 19th to 25th place on lap 48, led by Cameron Taylor. Despite being held back by lap traffic, they're only about six seconds behind the leaders. Back at the business end of the field, Barry Juveno leads the field as they encounter lap traffic for the first time on lap 53. Brendan Kelly tries to give them room, but slots into the middle and starts holding up traffic. This allows Barry Juveno to extend his lead by a wide margin over the rest of the field. On lap 59, the 51 car of Blake Kamphausen slides up the track and hits the wall pretty hard, similar to what other cars have been doing all day. He slides back and holds up some of the field in the process. He keeps going with a little bit of right side damage, as you can see here. On lap 67, Lewis Jones reports a vibration on the car and pulls the car onto the apron. He has a tire going down, and he pulls it into the pits and loses several laps in the process. One lap before green flag pits begin, the leaders come across their old friend, Brendan Kelly, in the two car. He proceeds to make the leader's life miserable by holding up the entire main pack. Kenny Gartosa manages to get by him, but he holds up the rest of the field. The lead group is bearing down on the smaller group of cars consisting of Caleb Williams, Chester Benson, Sam Smith, and Preston Bell, and you can see Sam Smith dive onto pit road and kick off green flag pit stops on lap 70. The next lap, the first leaders decide to pit. The 37, the 31, the 85, and the 34 all dive onto pit road to make their pit stops. The next lap, Kenny Gartosa and the majority of the leaders make their pit stop, and Isaac Kowalczyk stays out on the track. A risky fuel gamble by the 37, and Ryan Jeffries stays out too. Kowalczyk, the Polish former rally car driver, stands to gain a lot of ground if he can make this pay off, if he can make it an extra lap, and Kowalczyk and Jeffries finally dive onto pit road on lap 73. If the rally car driver and the rookie can make this pay off, their crew chiefs are going to be heroes. Kowalczyk pulls up on the track, and it appears he's beaten the leaders. Kowalczyk is pulling up on the track, and he is seconds ahead of the lead pack, but they will catch him entering turn three. He manages to hang on though, and will stay in the lead group. However, pit stops have not fully cycled out. This is Cameron Taylor running in the lead in the 150 car. He, Chris Benson, and Joe Craig have stayed out an extra few laps to gain a shot at the lead. I have no idea how they've made fuel stretch out this long, but they better pit soon or else they're going to run out on the track. 
Chris Benson and Joe Craig pull their cars into the pits on lap 79 out of fuel. Somehow, Cameron Taylor makes his fuel stretch all the way to lap 81, and he pulls into the pits, still with gas in the car. As for the huge lead he built, there goes the main pack right by him. However, he's still in contention for a good finish. After Pitts cycled out, on lap 83, there are only nine cars on the lead lap with Claire Ossier leading, and she gets a challenge from Ryan Jeffries, whose strategy appears to have paid off. The field stayed relatively stable until two laps to go. Christopher Loxton leads with Ryan Jeffries in second place down the backstretch. Some movement back in the field, and Jeffries jumps low, making a pass on Loxton for the lead. With help from Kenny Gartosa and Claire Ossier, Jeffries completes the pass, entering turn three, and will hold his ground, entering turn four. At the white flag, Jeffries leads with Gartosa in second, but Ossier is coming. Ossier makes the pass on Gartosa and makes it stick, and coming to the backstretch, Jeffries leads with Ossier in second place and Gartosa in third. Coming into the trial, Ossier looks low and gets past Jeffries, and Loxon in is coming. Ossier throws the block on Loxon in, and Ossier will win at Talladega, becoming the first repeat winner this year.